Their opinions were divided. Some believed it was all fraud. Others argued that they were caused by involuntary reactions of the brain or even that mediumship was a psychopathological symptom. On the other side of the debate, some scientists considered the possibility that mediumship could demonstrate the existence of unknown forces of nature or even the evidence of the survival of the soul to bodily death. But it was in 1882 that a group of renowned scientists and intellectuals founded the SPR, the Society for Psycho Research, and became actively committed to conduct thorough investigations on mesmeric, psychical, and spiritualistic phenomena with the same spirit of exact and unimpassioned inquiry which has enabled science to solve so many problems. They believed that the best methodological approach to those phenomena would be first to gather as much evidence as possible and subsequently to filter out any that was doubtful or suspicious. They hoped that the remaining data would be sufficient for scientific and statistical evaluation. It is important to point out that data collection and methods of control, as well as the means of recording, were in keeping with the scientific standards of the time. If we consider hypnosis alone, we must mention pain control in major surgical procedures, such as the removal of tumors or even amputations. That, of course, was an important contribution to medicine before the coming of anesthetics. Psychology and psychiatry also hold that with the first magnetizers, considering that the healing of physical problems depended then on the treatment of psychological issues dealt through hypnosis. Adding the research of mediumship to those on hypnosis, we have to mention that those observations were crucial to the development of concepts of mind such as automatisms, dissociation, and the subconscious mind. Hence, the study of secondary personalities also advanced new models to understand some mental disorders. Besides that, 19th century psycho research in a way preceded parapsychological investigation and contributed to the development of statistical techniques and procedures of randomization, all of these utilized nowadays by psychology. Unfortunately, most of the manuals on the history of psychology and psychiatry do not acknowledge these contributions. Maybe. That's one of our tasks as researchers of this field. My research covers the period of approximately 30 years between the 1880s and 1910, in which William James, one of the most important figures to the history of psychology and philosophy in the United States, dedicated himself to the investigation of psychic phenomena. This was a period in which there was an overlap between James's most important psychological and philosophical writings and his endeavor as a psycho-researcher with Boston medium Leonora Piper as his prime subject. However, by the end of his life, James came to the conclusion that he was theoretically no further than he was at the beginning. That's why James scholar Eugene Taylor once asked what he called an unanswered question. Why was James interested in these phenomena in the first place, and to what end did he pursue them? My hypothesis to answer to that question is that William James was not interested on transmediumship so much as a means of proving or disproving ghosts, raps, and messages from spirits. I argue that James's experiments with Piper and the observation of her mediumistic abilities informed his psychology as well as his philosophy to a larger extent than it is admitted. Mm -hmm.